Good evening, everyone. I'm Moon Spirit, and welcome to a new show that I like to call Return to the Retro! In this show, it is exactly as it sounds. I, as a modern gamer, am returning to my retro roots and going back to the glory days of polygons and pixels. But why am I going back to my retro roots? Well, I've been inspired by lots of YouTubers who look at the games of old, making me realize how much I miss the retro days. Well, that, and as of right now, which was September by the time I wrote this review, it was a pretty dry season for new games, and I'm thirsty for something old-fashioned. I can probably blame Shovel Knight for making me miss those pixelated memories. I mean, that game was so much fun! But where do I begin? Well, I bought several games from my local game stores and gaming conventions, which is a good start. Or maybe I can look at my old retro library that I've been keeping for all these years. I just never had the heart to get rid of these games. I mean, I had so many fond memories with them. But here's the thing. This place that I live in is not my original home. I had to move into this new place with my family a few years back, and unfortunately, I lost a lot of my old stuff, such as my first Sega Genesis, my N64 games, some SNES games, some Sega Genesis games. Luckily, I still have my Nintendo 64 and my Super Nintendo, but I had to buy a new Genesis, but enough about that. What game should I play? Let's see. Um, oh, how about Run Saber? Or maybe um, Side the Hedgehog? Or maybe Jet Force Gemini? Wait, I got it. Hold on. Ah, here's something. Quack shot. Developed by Disney Interactive Studios in 1991, this game has sparked so many memories for me as a kid. I remember how much fun I had with this game, alongside my Sonic games, Castle of Illusion, and my cousin's Streets of Rage games. This game really takes me back. This was one of the few that I remember finishing alongside Super Mario World. Now, I was not a great gamer back in the day, as I had some difficulty playing some of the games in my library, so I was pretty much a noob. But now I'm grown up, and I'm a better gamer than ever. Well, more of a 6 out of 10, based on how good I am against competition. But the real question is, does this game still hold up today? Well, let's pop this bad boy and find out. What? Ah, damn it. Hold on. There we go. I am a genius. The game begins with a cutscene featuring Disney's feathered friend, Donald Duck, as he's rummaging through his Uncle Scrooge's books while he's taking a nap. No doubt, Scrooge must be tired from one too many DuckTale Avengers, am I right? Anyway, Donald discovers a treasure map in a book about King Garuzia, and realizes the treasure could make him rich. But it seems that one of Pete's spies, yes, you heard me, Pete has a gang in the story, catches on about the treasure and Pete wants it. With a treasure map in hand and a plane in tow, Donald, along with his nephews Huey, Dewey, and Louie, all set out on their own ducktail adventure to find clues to King Garuzia's treasure, with Pete's gang trailing after them. Along your travels, you'll come across familiar Disney characters like Goofy and Gyro Kirloose, but you won't get to meet Mickey. You'll just have to make do with a cameo of his face. Since this isn't a DuckTales adventure, Scrooge won't be joining on the adventure, and there will be no Beagle Boys, Linhart Glomgold, or Gizmo Duck. Just play the original DuckTales video game, or the remastered version. The game is a round-the-world adventure where you must travel the globe to search for clues to find Garuzia's treasure. You'll be traveling to several locales like Duckburg, Egypt, Transylvania, and the South Pole. This is almost like an Indiana Jones adventure, but that won't be the only Indiana Jones reference to mention in this game. In fact, let's make a counter of how many references I can find in this game. Let's start by counting the map for the plane travel. Now Donald is dressed for adventure, 
as he's got an adventurous jacket and hat, almost like Indiana Jones. However, Donald doesn't use a whip in this game, otherwise this gang wouldn't be called Quackshot. The levels look really nice as the soundtrack accentuates the locations. Mexico has a peppy mariachi-like vibe with its desert habitat, while the places like Maharaja in Egypt has that Middle Eastern feel. Even Darkbird has that nice bustling feel as you climb the rooftops and fending off evil turtles and... Onomatopoeia? But what I do love is the temple music, as it really gives off a sense of danger and mystery once you explore these ruins. The enemies you encounter mostly bear Pete's insignia, depending on where you are. Otherwise, you'll face against evil cacti, vampire bats, ghosts, penguins, and snakes. I think that counts as an Indiana Jones reference, I suppose. But be on the lookout for those pesky birds, as they will drop bombs, or worse, BEES! There are a few bosses to face against in the entire game. First, you face a duck version of Dracula, a ghost viking, and a fire breathing tiger. That's right, a tiger that breathes fire. Is it wrong of me to think of this? I am fire. I am death. <laughs> plays like your standard platformer, but the levels do not simply end just by going from start to end. At the end of each level, there will be obstacles you can't overcome or doors that you cannot open unless you have specific items you need to progress. The items you'll need range from keys to jewels or maps. Thankfully when you do come to the end of a level, Donald will place a flag as a checkpoint so you can call on your nephews to pick you up by plane to take you to your next destination. And when you have the necessary items, you'll be dropped off at the checkpoint to continue on. This definitely eliminates a lot of excessive backtracking. The controls kind of take some getting used to, as they can be a bit iffy at times. For instance, the jump button is a bit tricky as you'll need to time your jumps just right. Donald can do a wicked slide move like Mega Man, only except he slides his belly down and it makes him sound aerodynamic. He also has a dash button, but Donald only moves slightly quicker, so the dash is kind of unnecessary. As stated earlier, Donald's main weapon of choice is a plunger gun, which is meant to stun your enemies for a few seconds. But don't worry, you have unlimited plungers. You can upgrade your plungers abilities as you progress further in the game. For example, Goofy gives you red plungers so you can climb over walls. Later, you'll get a green... Viking plunger? Okay, which sticks to flying enemies so you can fly. Huh. Who knew Vikings knew so much about plumbing? Maybe that's what Thor should have wielded against Loki. There is, however, other ammo to find like popcorn ammo, which shoots like a shotgun and takes out your enemies, but ammo is scarce so don't waste them. Gyro Gearloose gives you the final special ammo called Bubblegum Ammo. Bubblegum Ammo fires a bubble that is mostly used to destroy certain obstacles like blocks and barrels. But these aren't the only offensive attacks Donald has in his repertoire. In some of the levels, there are chili peppers to find that you'll need to fill up Donald's temper meter, but they aren't hard to find. Sometimes they're out in the open, sometimes the enemies will carry them in their bags. Either way, collect five peppers and Donald will go into a temper tantrum where he makes a mad dash and destroys whatever is in his path. So after finding a Viking diary, the last clue to find the treasure, he captures Donald's nephews and demands the map and the Viking diary in exchange for the boys' safety. Donald has no choice but to oblige, and Pete leaves with the map and diary in tow. But Donald and his nephews won't let Pete get away with all that. He finally confronts Pete in his moving pile driver machine to fight for the diary and map. Once Pete surrenders, Donald gets his stuff back and is on his way to the treasure. Now the final level has Donald tracking through a jungle, then another temple while finding sand guards, I believe, and crossing... an empty chasm? Oh wait, no! It's more of a leap of faith! Just like Indiana Jones! Again! After making that leap of faith, it's time to face the spirit of Garuzia, who looks more like a medieval knight, but with magic powers. Would this count as an Indian reference too, because Indiana Jones does meet a crusader in the caves in the last crusade? 
So after finally defeating Garuzia, he deems you worthy of earning his treasure. Whatever could it be? Oh, it's just a mere statue of a duck princess. Ouch. Poor Donald. So Donald heads back home to tell Daisy of the result of his fruitless effort of finding riches. And Daisy is not very pleased. But as the nephews bring over the statue, they trip and break the statue in half, only to reveal what was inside the statue was a golden jeweled necklace as it lands around Daisy's neck. This pleases Daisy, and the game ends with her kissing Donald leaving him on cloud nine. While the nephews are like, Ah, jeez, get out wrong, you two! Quackshot can be within an hour if you know how to play it, but regardless, I still had fun! Seeing all those Disney characters brings back the nostalgia I miss from Disney Afternoon. I mean, this game represents my childhood! And though some people put away childish things when they grow up, I've now become someone who will treasure gems like this for a long time. After all, how can we appreciate the games of today if we couldn't acknowledge the ones of the past? That's why Quackshot is a quacktastic bullseye! The adventure was pretty fun, as was going to all those exotic places. The platforming segments can be a bit tricky to pull off, but it doesn't come off as frustrating. The music is fun to listen to while climbing walls, shooting your enemies and whatnot, but most importantly, this game still has that Disney charm to this day, and I couldn't ask for any more than that. Well, that's all the time we have for y'all today, so let me know if you want to see more retro game reviews, because I am so happy to be back to my roots! And I definitely would love to do more of these. So until then, I'm Moon Spirit saying good night. <laughs>